Disaster. The International Space Station Problem. Russia. The International Space Station, a collaboration between the United States, Russia, and a few other members, is one of the most successful feats of international space collaboration. This international collaboration is still going on today with various member countries contributing vehicles, equipment, and personnel. However, Russia's conflict with Ukraine has repercussions for space. Recently, Moscow announced that it will leave the International Space Station in 2024 and launch its own space stations shortly afterward. Given how the ongoing conflict in Ukraine is reshaping geopolitics, the move is not particularly surprising. However, its consequences for space are surprisingly devastating. Politics was not supposed to have any influence on the ISS. Russia and the United States began building the space station in the late 1990s, and the collaboration was regarded as a major feat of international cooperation, particularly in the aftermath of the Cold War and the decades-long space race. Since then, the ISS has brought astronauts from all over the world together to conduct research that could eventually help humans travel even further into space. The ISS partnership now includes 15 different countries and is regarded by some as humanity's greatest achievement, one that has largely been above and beyond what is happening on Earth. But this is becoming increasingly unreliable now. Russia used the ISS in 2014 to try and persuade the US to recognize its annexation of Crimea, a peninsula in southern Ukraine, and which Ukraine still considers to be part of its territory. In an apparent attempt to put pressure on the US to recognize Russia's claims to the region, the Russian space program suggested relocating astronaut training to Crimea. This was a critical threat at the time, because NASA astronauts needed training to travel on Russia's Soyuz rockets, which was the only way to reach the ISS at the time. The conflict occurred just months after the United States imposed sanctions to punish Russia for its invasion of Crimea. In response, Roscosmos, the state space corporation of Russia, asserted that it would no longer transport NASA astronauts with Dmitry Rogozin, the head of the Roscosmos, until his firing on July 15th, suggesting in a tweet that the US should bring their astronauts to the International Space Station using a trampoline. The good news is that United States is no longer reliant on the Roscosmos for transportation to the International Space Station. SpaceX has been transporting NASA astronauts to the space station since 2020. The bad news is that Russia has repeatedly stated that it will not be committed to the ISS's long-term future. Russia has threatened to leave the space station partnership in 2021, citing US sanctions. The situation deteriorated further in November when Russia used an anti-satellite missile to destroy a defunct spy satellite, resulting in thousands of pieces of space debris, including a few that US officials feared could damage the ISS. This test demonstrated not only Russia's ability to shoot down a satellite from Earth, but also that it was seemingly willing to endanger its own ISS cosmonauts, who were forced to take refuge in emergency vehicles for several hours following the test. Things deteriorated even further in February, when Rogozin threatened to crash the ISS into Earth. The Russian space agency announced the following month that it would no longer collaborate with Germany on science experiments on the ISS, as well as stop selling rocket engines to the United States, on which NASA has historically relied. And Rogozin reaffirmed that without Russia's assistance, NASA would have to find another way to reach the ISS. He suggested broomsticks this time. For these reasons, Russia's announcement to leave the ISS was not unexpected. Despite the war, NASA has attempted to maintain a sense of rationality aboard the ISS. The agency has posted updates about science experiments taking place aboard the space station and even held a press conference in April to promote the first privately crewed mission to the ISS. However, the United States is racing behind the scenes to figure out what an ISS without Russia might look like. Northrop Grumman has offered to build a replacement propulsion system for Russia, and Elon Musk has suggested on Twitter that SpaceX could also assist. Efforts to keep the ISS operational without Russia may be successful for a few years, but the space station will not last forever. NASA still intends to deorbit the ISS by the end of the decade, after which it will be slowly deorbited over a remote part of the Pacific Ocean, making way for new space stations. This includes China's Tiangong Space Station, which launched its first module into orbit last May. 
astronauts are already aboard, and it's expected to be completed by the end of 2022. In addition to several new commercial space stations under development in the United States, Russia, and India, both intend to launch their own national space stations in the coming decade. Because these stations will generally be under the jurisdiction of a single country, they are unlikely to be as diverse as the ISS. Russia is also forging a new path in space. Some of Russia's near-term space plans have been unaffected by the country's ongoing conflict with Ukraine, at least for the time being. Astronaut Mark Van Hai, for example, returned to Earth on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, with two cosmonauts at the end of March. Other aspects of Russia's space agenda, however, are now in flux, possibly signaling Roscosmos' new approach. For one thing, deteriorating relationships between Europe and Russia have already had an impact on their space work. The European Space Agency, or the ESA, which represents 22 European countries, issued a statement in late February, recognizing sanctions against Russia. In response, Roscosmos postponed several satellite launches at Europe's spaceport in French Guiana that were scheduled to use Russia's Soyuz rocket. Separately, the Russian space agency is at odds with the United Kingdom over plans to launch 36 satellites from the satellite internet company OneWeb into orbit. Roscosmos was supposed to deliver these satellites on March 4th, but refuses unless the United Kingdom sold its stake in the company and guaranteed that the satellites would not be used for military purposes. The United Kingdom, which has declared its own sanctions against Russia, has stated that it is unwilling to negotiate. Following that, OneWeb announced that it would instead hire SpaceX to launch some of its satellites. Plans for missions that will travel farther into space are also changing. Following Russia's invasion, Romania, Singapore, and Bahrain announced their intention to join the Artemis Accords. 15 other countries, including Poland and Ukraine, had already agreed to the NASA-led set of principles which are intended to guide the country's exploration of space. And while Roscosmos was supposed to send a robot to Mars alongside the ESA this year, officials said that these plans are now very unlikely. Rogozin stated that Russia will prevent the United States from sending a mission to Venus in the future. For what it's worth, Rogozin of Roscosmos has suggested in the past that Venus is a Russian planet. We don't yet know how Russia's conflict with Ukraine will affect its cooperation with China's space program, the China Manned Space Agency or CMSA. In recent years, the two countries' space agencies have developed broad plans to collaborate in space, including an effort to build a moon base. Russia may also lend a hand to CMSA in the completion of its own space station. It's not surprising that CMSA would prefer to collaborate with Roscosmos over NASA. The United States has largely excluded China from its space work. A 2011 U.S. law prohibits NASA from collaborating with China's space agency, and no Chinese astronaut has ever visited the International Space Station. This prohibition serves as a reminder that the ISS was never as international as its name implies. And it also provides CMSA with ample reason to develop its own sophisticated space program. It's unclear how much international conflicts matter to Russia right now. Again, Roscosmos intends to construct its own national space station, which it hopes to be completed by 2025. And the Russian space agency has already begun construction on the station's first core module. Then there's the fact that Russia was a space race leader long before it began working with the ISS. Though the chances are dwindling by the day, there's always the chance that Roscosmos will come around and reconcile with NASA. After all, the Soviet Union and the United States attempted to collaborate in space throughout the Cold War too, even as the two countries competed for the ultimate supremacy. That's pretty much it for this video guys, let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and remember, make sure to subscribe to this channel with bell notifications on if you enjoy our content. We upload some pretty awesome stuff which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on the video, leave a comment below, see you guys in the next one.